Hello again everyone, uh, welcome to another video on my home labs. Uh, I'm starting this one a slightly bit different because I currently have COVID so I'm finding things to do that are non-stressful just to uh, stop me running out of breath. So I thought I'd haul out the uh, R320 as it's been sat running since I did my last video and uh, here it is. Uh, this server was the first one that I built in the uh, home labs that I've started, which I'll put a link somewhere up there in a minute, um, just to uh, run some, it's been running a couple of sat well, satisfactory server, it's been running our uh, Gmod server for prop hunt and a few other little things that I've been playing with uh, alongside the uh, HP that I also did. But something that's become very, very apparent is uh, the RAID controller in this one is pathetic. <coughs> Take two. Incredibly pathetic. Purely and simply because it just cannot deal with a RAID 5 array, which is what is in here. So uh, we're going to do some upgrades um, just to bring it up to speed. Uh, first thing, I've got an iDRAC card to go in the back to give it a dedicated iDRAC port. Uh, we've got uh, an E5 2470V2 CPU to go in it, which is the biggest it can have. And we've got a PERC H710 RAID controller, but we've also got a PERC H710 RAID controller and a PERC H710 RAID controller. Now, two of these are H710Ps. One is a H710. And I haven't been bothered to look because I bought one in error, one because I needed it, and then one because I'd forgot I bought the one that I needed. So, yes, I have three RAID controllers, but uh, anyway. So, without further ado, let's um, quickly fire it up and I'll show you the speed issue that there is. And then we'll sort doing a swap of a RAID controller and bring the array over. As you can see, this is a crystal disc, just a quick benchmark to show the problem with this particular controller in the uh, server. Uh, read speeds, obviously, all good. The write speeds, absolutely atrocious. So we'll do a, uh, not live, I'll shut this down and we'll do a RAID controller swap and do exactly the same test. Uh, I've made sure that it's a two gig test because uh, the RAID controller we're putting in has a one gig cache and we want to exceed that. But we'll just see what difference we get in terms of performance. So. Uh, Let's go and uh, pop the lid off. Now, if you do end up in a situation like me where you end up with um, three pretty much identical RAID controllers, uh, the way to tell the difference is quite simply the Dell part number here, which is 0TY8F9, and on here is 05CT6D. And as you see here, 0TY8F9, which means this one and this one are the 1 gig. H710P minis, and this is the 512Meg H710 mini. So we're not going to use this one, we'll use one of these two. Now, just to be good, we're going to make sure we've disconnected ourselves for this because we're playing around with a few things, but we can pop the lid off already. And again, one handed. So back into the R320, put the lid down there. So the bits we're going to be having a sorting today, we are going to be replacing that. We are going to be swapping what's under there and we're going to be installing a RAID card, not RAID card, an iDRAC card there. So uh, let's just quickly swap them in place. Go around here quickly because a lot of this is fairly hot swappable. This is the iDRAC card. This is an iDRAC 7 Enterprise card. Just allows you to have iDRAC running on a standalone interface and you get a memory card socket, but don't really need that for what I, I just want it on its own separate socket. So we can ping the clip off the back here. Can't remember which way these ping off. They just come up, that's why. 
like so and that lifts up we can then get you out the way slide you out the way and then slot you in there like that gives us a nice hydrat card put you back in place um, because we are going perk to perk what we should be able to do and be a good test because we'll do it live is um, keep the RAID configuration off the drives and just import it into the replacement controller so this should be a case of pushing down on the blue clips and out pops the RAID card so that is a perk H310 which is fine if you just wanted drive access if you don't if you would need raid like I'm using it just doesn't unfortunately have much oomph has no cash on it so we'll put him there and we'll grab a 710p which has battery backup and everything else on it and we line it up at the back we go line it back up again difficult to do this one-handed not advised but we'll make it work because I can and press it down like so one raid controller swap in a Dell R310 same with the R410s oh. I'm not sure. Exactly, Alexa. And last but by no means least, let me whiz that off. So we are going from an Intel Xeon E5-1410, which is a single CPU Xeon, even though this is an R320, obviously it's only a single CPU board. We're going to go from a 4-core, 8-thread CPU. Oh, come on. Show you which way. That's that way, that goes that way. And you come up that way. And... Careful, careful of the pins on the board. And courtesy of our good friends in China, a 2470V2, which is a 10 core, 20 thread CPU, which obviously is a bit more useful in a virtualized environment. Located it down like so put you back over there clamp you down and then some thermal paste and I'll put the lid back on it now just to get a better quick look at the RAID controllers so this is a H310 this is a H710 Mini, and this is a H710P Mini. And these are the RAID controllers that were optional within the 12th gen. And no, the 13th gen, they did change. So this is the entry level controller. There is no onboard cache, no back onboard backup battery. Um, it's a basic RAID controller. It does RAID 1, does RAID 0 okay, but again, when this was new it was the entry level so wasn't the quickest this superseded it this was the h710 this comes with a 512 gig of cache no not 512 gig 512 meg of cache um on board raid backup battery so if you lose power the battery keeps the cache alive and then this superseded it again, which is the 710p, just got a gig of onboard cache. So um, 
that's what we've just put in here. So first boot up, I haven't tested it yet. So let's see what we get. Well, it turns on, which is good. Let me uh, put you guys down a second so we can see what happens. We're going to enter the life cycle controller because I need to have a look at the RAID controller on here, which I'm sure will throw up an error shortly. Also, with adding in the um, dedicated card for the iDRAC, I need to make sure that that is enabled. I can't remember if this thing has a proper enterprise license, but that's easy enough to sort. Now, because we've got a perk configuration already on the disks, let's have a look. All of the disks from your previous configuration are gone. This is unexpected. Please power off your system and check the cables. Well, they're not. They're all there. But um, let's press something because um, what we should get. Is the ability to import the configuration. And the baseboard management has picked up that the RAID control has changed. Okay, let's go into the configuration utility. Uh, we should be able to see all our discs, we can. It's the actual enclosure. And it's actually already imported the uh, grade five array. And what we can now do is just check view associated discs, yep. So we've already brought the array in, but now what we have is the ability to have read ahead. And write back cache. So we can turn them on and gain quite a bit of performance. So that is how you change over a RAID controller in a Dell server. Just check the controller and check its battery because it's probably flat. Oh, optimal. Uh, battery is charging. Don't need to configure any of that. Finish that, and we'll just go and check our iDRAC settings now on the network. A suspicion that I need to uh, license this up as an enterprise version because I believe it's Express, that's why. So, for this to work, I need to change that to an enterprise license, which I'll go and purchase. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And that will give me the option to have a dedicated thing. Still at 64 gig. Just check the processor settings. Xeon E5 24-7 V2 2.4. 10 cores. 20 threads. Up from 4 cores and 8 threads. And that is it. Let's reboot and go into Windows. Well now here's a before and after. So here's the benchmarks from earlier and here's a freshly run benchmark exactly the same. And this is the difference that array controller with cache that's built to run a good array can make. As you can see we are uh, significantly quicker in the sequentials on the read side. Uh, we've lost a little bit in the 4k reads but again that can be down to couple of different variables I think the array is verifying itself at the moment so that won't help a little bit but uh, generally we're up massively on the right writing speeds so that will keep the guys happy because uh, satisfactory was lagging like hell when it was saving so uh, I'm going to get this back in its rack get it fired back up get the service fired back up and get people back in testing but there you go swapping a RAID controller in a Dell server is pretty painless go from a H310 to a H710P and that's the performance gain with a RAID 5 array obviously this is an SSD array as well so the only reason I'm running RAID 5 normally you would never ever ever run RAID 5 on any modern spinning disks so uh, there we go thank you for watching apologies for my out of breathiness but that's Covid for you till next time